Hey guys, welcome back to Rocky Mountain Backcountry. I think we got a good treat for you today. It's been suggested to me many times to disconnect those sway bars while I'm out in the rocks. So I brought my ratchet with me. We're gonna unhook those. I'm gonna show you some before it's disconnected and I'm gonna show you some after it's disconnected. And uh, we'll be able to compare them both, get a good idea of what this thing will do with and without the sway bar. So hang out with us today on Rocky Mountain Backcountry. Let's see what this thing does. All right, so here is the challenge here today. This is a little spot we named years and years and years ago as we call it the gap because of the gap in here. Brought Jeeps and rock crawlers and stuff up through here. You can see the tire marks. It gets, gets kind of wild. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set the camera up right here and I'm going to come up this with the sway bar connected and I'm going to roll over it, drop down off this side here, disconnect the sway bar and then I'm going to come back over the top of it so you can get a good idea of what that front suspension is doing. So let's check it out. I don't know if I need to show you guys any more than that or not. You can see the difference just right now. Um, massive difference in the flex in the front end. I would say <laughs> probably 10 inches. You saw on that last little spot that we were on, the first time we went over that, this side of the front end was way up in the air and as we came over it, Without the sway bar connected, you can see that this side soaked it up a lot like it's doing right now. So there is uh, some definite truth to it performing better with the sway bars disconnected. So right now what I'm going to do is I don't even need to do more video of going over rocks or anything like that. It's pretty obvious. So I'm going to go do some higher speed stuff and hit a trail, hit a road, do some things. So let's go see what it does on the road. Okay, so I'm just riding around out here on some trails that are right here above the house. My shocks are in the number one setting, which is the softest setting. And I've got the sway bar disconnected. You can definitely feel that the front end is taking up a lot more of the bumps. I'm not on any kind of main road. You can see I'm only doing oh, around 20 miles an hour. If 
I can feel quite a bit of difference in the front suspension. There is some body roll, but you know, I don't think it's too bad for what I'm doing right now. So let's go hit a road. Get a little more speed on us. So I think you got it that time, but uh, that kind of threw me off a little bit. So the long and short of this story is there's a time and there's a place for that sway bar and going fast on the road around good flat corners. That is the time for the sway bar. When you're out in the rocks, a little bit less sway bar works out pretty good. All right, so we're back on the road. Sway bar is still disconnected. Well guys, thanks for checking out Rocky Mountain Backcountry. That's all I'm going to give you for sway bar. It is pretty obvious. On the road you want a sway bar, on the trail you don't. So stay tuned. I'm going to come up with some kind of a quick disconnect for this little guy right here. I don't think it'll be too difficult, but uh, yeah, depends on where you're riding. So I really don't think that I would leave it disconnected all the time, especially for as much as I go up and down the main roads. That's it for Rocky Mountain Backcountry today, guys. Like this video, subscribe to us, watch for more. I want to bring you some good trail rides, and I want to bring you some good information. So uh, thanks again for checking out Rocky Mountain Backcountry. We'll see you next time.